LLCs and corporations have a new law that applies in 2024 that means you have to file something to the federal government. It's called the Beneficial Ownership Information Report. This was a new law called the Corporate Transparency Act, passed a couple years ago, but now it requires you to do something and you have until December 31st, 2024. This requirement, I'm gonna go over what it is, what companies have to report, how you file it, what exemptions there are, what fees apply? Where's the website you go to to do this on your own? Can you hire someone to take care of it for you? I'm gonna go over all those questions that you must have right now if you have an LLC or corporation. Now, this is a new thing. If you're like, Matt, I set up an LLC or I've had one for years. I just have a rental property. I got a small business. I got a side hustle. Does this apply to me? Yes, it applies to all of you. You all have to comply with this. Now, we filed thousands of these in our company, Main Street Business Services, where we do company compliance. We filed thousands of them in our law firm for any of these we set up. So we've been down the road. We're making sure people are complying with it. But I'm telling you, 90% of business owners that have LLCs and corporations have not complied with this yet. And we've got 60 days. So this is critical to make sure that you get this filed. Now, I want to talk about what this is. This beneficial ownership information report is a filing that any LLC or corporation files to the federal government and says, hey, we're an LLC. Here's who has substantial control of that LLC. And here's who owns 25% or more of this LLC or corporation. The federal government wants to know this. They're going after money laundering and all these criminal activities they believe is happening in LLCs or corporations. And so they're requiring all of this disclosure to the federal government. Now, this information that you file on this beneficial ownership information report we're going to talk about here in a second is private. The federal government does not disseminate this even to state government agencies without a subpoena, nor do they make it available to the public to go search. So it is going private to the federal government. So federal government agencies will have access to this. But again, this is not going to be a public database. So for any of you worried about privacy, don't stress about that there. So let's talk about what companies need to report first, because there's two exemptions to this that could work for you. Nine out of 10 of you, you're not going to fall into this for small business owners, but it could. So I want to cover that. So first, a reporting company is is anyone that is an LLC corporation or entity set up at the state level in the US. Okay, that's covering a lot of you listening right now. Now that there's 20 exemptions to this. Most of the exemptions are about you already report something to the federal government, your SEC regulated or all these things like that. But for most small businesses, 18 of the 20 don't even make sense. There's two that do. So the first exemption that could apply to you is the inactive entity exemption. Now the inactive entity exemption only applies for entities set up before January 1st, 2020 that are no longer doing business or holding assets. You're not conducting transactions or owning property in this entity. But let's say you set up an entity back in 2018. You don't use it anymore. You're not paying fees or anything. It's just there's no business being conducted in it. You don't have to worry about FinCEN and doing the BOI. Okay. Now, I might recommend as your lawyer that you dissolve that and shut that down and tie it off properly, but whatever, if you've got some old entity out there you're not using, you could decide to not file the BOI. Now, what if you're like, well, Matt, I have an entity I set up in 2021 in COVID, maybe it was a side hustle, or I bought a rental and I sold it, and now there's nothing going on in that entity. Do I need to file this? It's inactive. Yeah, you do. The inactive entity exemption only applies for entities set up before 2020, okay? So you'll still need to file that BOI filing. Now, you could say, ah, let's just dissolve that entity. And right now in our law firm, we are dissolving so many entities for clients. This is like corporate cleanup time, okay? For many of you that have entities you don't use anymore, this is the time to go clean them up and dissolve them. By the way, we have a special in our law firm going on right now this week, actually, where we are discounting services to go clean up entities, dissolve entities, restructure stuff to try and simplify this because BOI is such a big issue. Or we're helping you actually file this BOI report. I'll talk about that here in a second. So that's the inactive entity exemption. You have to have had the entity set up before 2020 and it's no longer holding assets or conducting any business. Now make sure you click the link in the description below to connect with our law firm where we're helping clients right now, making sure they're getting compliance with the BOI. We're filing those filings if you need it. We're also dissolving or restructuring your entities. You just get rid of this stuff so you don't have to worry about filing in the first place. Now we also have Main Street Business Services. That's our company where we do company compliance. We do your state renewals. We do your minutes. We will do your BOI filing too and any amendments that you might have in the future. So that's Main Street Business Services as well. We're trying to get you 
in our company compliance entity or in our law firm just to make sure you are complying with this. All right, now the second exemption is one that actually I don't love because it's not great for small business. It's the large company exception. And basically what this exception says is if you're a large company, you don't even have to worry about this BOI FinCEN filing. Small businesses, you have to. Large companies, don't worry about it. Now here's what is a large company under the rules, 20 employees and 5 million in annual revenue. So if you meet both those criteria and you conduct business in the US, you don't have to worry about doing the BOI FinCEN filing. Now that revenue must be reported on a federal tax return and the employees on your payroll report. So the IRS does kind of at least know who you are and know something about what's going on in your business. But those companies do not have to file the BOI FinCEN filing. Everyone below that, you still got to file. All right, so now let's talk about what you actually have to file, okay? So if you go to FinCEN.gov slash BOI, we'll have a link to that below. You can see what you actually need to file. Now, what you're going to file to the company is basically a disclosure document. You're going to say, what is the LLC's name? What is its tax ID? Who owns 25% or more of the company? Who has substantial control in the company? For an LLC, substantial control would be like be the manager of the LLC or anyone who's a member manager. For a corporation, it would be any officer, maybe a board member that has real control in the company. They would need to be listed on this BOI filing. Now, when you list these people, you also have to provide identifying information for them. You have to list their name, their address, and you also have to provide a photo government ID, and this is the big problem. We're trying to help clients comply with this, and typically most law firms and companies that set up entities don't collect IDs. We don't have to until now. And so now it's a regular practice for us in our law firm. We're setting up an entity. We automatically do this. We collect your ID. We do a BOI filing. But for the 20,000, 30,000 entities we set up for clients years ago, I don't have your ID. So we need your ID. So any of you that have used a law firm or you've used us, we've got to get your ID so we can file this BOI filing for you and get you compliant. It's part of the services we're doing now, trying to clean up, helping clients rehab their things right now. Get over to kqslawyers.com or mainstreetbusiness.com. We can help you there. But if, you can also file this on your own, by the way. You can handle this on your own if you want, okay? The key here is I want to make sure everyone complies with this by December 31st, 2024. If you don't, you will face daily penalties and possible jail time, okay? So we've got to make sure we're filing this thing. All right, so this disclosure document is saying what's the name of the LLC, anyone who has substantial control, and anyone who owns 25% or more, you're providing that identifying information, which includes a government ID, which could be a driver's license or a U.S. passport. Now, the deadline to file this, like I said, is December 31st, 2024. Now, this is for any entities that you set up before 2024. So I set up an entity in 2016. I set up an entity in 2023 or 2022. What's my deadline to get this BOI filing done? It's December 31st, 2024. Well, Matt, I just set up an entity in February of this year of 2024. When do I need to file? Your deadline's already passed. You have 90 days to file your BOI report with the federal government for any entity set up in 2024 or later. See, this rule went into effect in 2024. So they said, once you're setting up entities in 2024 forward, you have to file this BOI filing within 90 days. All of you that already have entities before, we're going to give you till the end of 2024, till December 31st, but new entities, you got 90 days. And that's actually an extension of what was in the statute of 30 days. Vincent has given a little extension to people for this year and the first year as everyone's getting familiar with the rules and the reporting requirements. So if you've set up an entity in 2024 and you haven't filed that BOI filing, you're late get compliant ASAP. Don't worry about the penalties or what do I got to do? Do I got to notify the federal government? No, you need to get the BOI filing done first and we can talk about whether you're going to have penalties or not. So far, we haven't seen the federal government enforcing this hard yet. They're just trying to get compliance and awareness out there first. The regulatory compliance and penalties are going to be coming around the corner next year once they felt like they've given everyone adequate time and warning to get this done. All right, now once you filed this BOI filing, okay, it's done to the federal government, it's private. It's not publicly searchable. Other people can't get access to this. You have an obligation to amend and update the BOI filing if anything change. Any of these owners of 25% or more change. Anyone who has substantial control changes. You have a change in management of an LLC or an officer change or a board member or someone that has substantial control changes in any entity. You've got to update it. The addresses change 
of anyone that's listed as a beneficial owner, substantial control. The address for the company changes. Okay, you've got to amend this, all right? And so our company, Main Street Business Services, where we handle company compliance for 10,000 plus customers across the country, we do your state renewal, we're doing your annual minutes, and we're updating your BOI filing if you need it over time, and we're filing your first one if you've never done it before. So you can get over to Main Street Business Services, you're like, I don't wanna worry about this crap anymore. I just need someone to take care of that for me. That's that service. It's 200 bucks a year, very affordable. Now, you want to rehash your corporate structure. You want to dissolve stuff, set up the right stuff, get a tax plan, have someone look at your asset protection. That's our law firm, KQS Lawyers. That's what our lawyers are doing every day, setting up thousands of entities a year. And we're helping you get compliant with BOI as part of that process too. So there are tens of thousands of our clients over the years dealing with this issue right now. And I want to make sure everybody knows about it before December 31st, 2024, I do not want you to be facing penalties or fines. And I'm not kidding. There is jail time in the statute. I'm not saying anyone from the federal government is going to come put you in orange yet right now. Um, we haven't seen that yet, but let's see what happens in 2025. Who knows who will be in the White House then? Right now, all I can say is let's just get you compliant. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard. The biggest piece of information we need from you to help you get compliant is your ID. Now, you can do this on your own. If you're like, Matt, I set up my entity on my own. I listen to your guys' podcast. I watch your YouTube channel. Love it. I'm going to do it yourself. Or great, go knock yourself out. Do it on your own. If I was you, I'd be like, hmm, maybe I should figure out how to make more money in my business and spend my time doing sales and delivering the services in my business because that's more valuable than me trying to play lawyer and company compliance company. I would just say outsource this stuff. Let us take care of it for you so you can go focus on your business. You're busy enough. Let us handle this for you. So get over to kqslawyers.com or mainstreetbusiness.com. The links are below. We want to help you on this. We want to make sure this is taken care of for you. I hope today's video was helpful. This is such a critical and important topic. This is the biggest change in LLCs and corporations in my 20 years as a lawyer. So I want to make sure you know what to do. You know the deadline that's coming up here, December 31st, 2024, because I don't want you paying penalties. And let's be honest, you don't look good in orange either, neither do I. But make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm always giving tips on how to save taxes, protect your assets, and grow and build wealth. I'm Matt Sorensen. We'll see you next time.